What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. And I'm Jason. And you are listening to Liquid Carnage. Suns in four, buddy. Dude, sweet Suns in four. Dude, that's what you call a major butt whooping. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think it was close to being even semi close to being a close. Uh, it was just, we, we were, it was just on fire, man. I couldn't believe it. I was. It, Denver was the one seed for a while there going into probably March or April. Then they kind of fell off a little bit. So even being the three seed, they were not a bad team. that just got hit by the injury bug. Well, I, and, and I would argue that even the, they had one injury, so I'll give them that. But that that injury was not enough to make me say that that they were matched up against Sun, the Suns. Just had a good team against them. No, I, mean, no, I would have said I would have said Suns in six had had Jamal Murray been been healthy. Uh, yeah. So I will just a disclaimer for our, our fans that are not sports fans: we're probably going to go down the sports rabbit hole today in honor of our Phoenix Suns. So buckle up because it's going to be a wild uh, Arizona driven driven episode. Now we are kind of in a in a funky way though here because we went to one of the playoff games uh, against the Lakers, Game Five yeah. of the Lakers, and it was Noreen's very first basketball game. But she became a fan and she's watched every single game that we've been available ever since. Oh yeah, it it is hard not to love this team right now. It is hard. Go Go ahead. ahead. I'll say, born and raised in Arizona, there was only the the Suns until 1987. And then when we got the Cardinals, uh, because of the blackout rule for football uh, and the networks, we only got to see Cardinal road games and they were terrible. So this was a Suns state. Phoenix, uh, up until about a decade ago, had the fourth best winning percentage ever in the NBA. They were perennial winners. And. When I started watching basketball, they used to play at the Madhouse and McDowell, Arizona Veterans Memorial Coliseum, and that was back in the days of Dan Marley and Kevin Johnson and Jeff Hornacek and Mark West, right before they traded for Charles Barkley. Oh, wow. Okay. And that year, they traded for Charles Barkley in 1992. That's when we went to the finals against Michael Jordan and the Bulls, man. And this, this state was electric. And there's a lot of feeling in this state right now like there was in 1992. Like, you could just feel it. And I know we have a dogfight in the Western Finals with either the Jazz or the Clippers. But you just gotta you gotta look at this team and be like, you know what? Yeah, th- these kids get it. They got it. They they can handle this. Yeah, I um I, the one thing I noticed from the game is that you know the 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 fans know how painful the last 10 years have been. Mm-hmm. And so um so every game, I mean, I, what I love is that we were at one of the games and it was, it was so loud in the arena. And then every time I've watched them on TV now, all the commentators talk about is how crazy the Phoenix fans are. And it must be just starvation. Like they just haven't is. had anything for 10 years. And so now it's like, they're just unleashing everything. It's a sleeping giant. And I, and I, and I, and I think that that's lost on a lot of people. Cause I listen to a lot of, other like national national uh, sports casts like undisputed Colin Coward or whatnot, they will talk about anybody but the Suns. Really? Yeah, they will not discuss the Suns, and when they do, it's Chris Paul. And there is no love for Phoenix on the national level yet. And to me, this team feels a lot like the 2015 Golden State Warriors when they won that first title. Yeah, without Kevin Durant. Without Kevin Durant, when they had Curry, uh, Thompson, and, and Draymond. Yeah, and they were young kids, kind of like we got now. I, I just, it's got that vibe, and with Chris Paul, man, oh. But well, I tell you though, the highlight for me, and I don't know if you saw this clip, uh, Friday night after the game, uh, the fight in the stands in Denver. Uh, no, you, could, you can follow me on, on Twitter at the Real Arizona Kern. Uh, I've posted it a few times. These two Denver fans were shit talking a Suns fan, and they started to walk away. And one of them tried to throw a club punch, like with the high ground, it just totally missed the Suns fan. <laughs> and the Suns fan grabs this dude by the chain around his neck and pulls him down and just starts laying into him. Like he hits him four or five times, lifts him up, pulls him back down, and hits him again. Like he whipped this guy's ass as they're pulling these two Nuggets fans off and trying to pull the Suns fan away. The Suns fan dead ass looks at this camera in the in it, right in the lens and screams, Suns in four as those guys are being pulled away and then the crowd goes nuts for him. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know about you, but I found it. I, I'm, I'm kind of like you. I, I get, I've gotten really tired about how little respect Devin Booker gets. Like, it's almost like, oh, he came from nowhere and look at him now. And oh, and I'm like, are you guys serious? You guys can't know the history of Devin Booker. He's like an amazing player. He's been on a crappy team. Yeah. You yeah. know? And, you know, he's finally getting the love and love and, he, and the respect he deserves. And I just, I'm excited, man. Like, I'm excited. And I, I, I can just talk Suns basketball. I can talk Golden Knights hockey right now. Uh, we're in, normally we're in that dead zone. Of, of sports right now uh, basketball would normally be winding up so would hockey uh, we'd be stuck with a terrible baseball team waiting for football training camp to start next month but we are blessed to have uh, hockey and uh, ho- foot basketball going into the conference finals through july to the actual finals of both sports so uh, and the olympics this year so it's a great sports summer coming out of the no sports summer from covid last year yeah, and and let's be honest. I mean, I how much does that do for a team or for a city when your team is like really good? Um, like the Golden Knights are a perfect example. I mean, the last four years that that city has bought all in on the Golden Knights because they started off so amazing. Oh yeah, and it looks like they have a really good chance this year to um, to move forward and 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 get that Stanley Cup. Um, the Suns, I mean. Obviously, you can't just tell off of one series, but this team is good. This team is good enough to do what they need to do. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that this team uh, has what it takes to be a force uh, the rest of the way. Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm all in in Phoenix. I, you know, I'll my my and I told our friend Dean today for the Western Finals, Suns and four, and then when we play in the finals, Suns and four, because I'm excited just for the whole thing. But. Uh, <laughs> I just I love the energy it's bringing to Arizona, and you're right when you when you talk about the Golden Knights in Las Vegas, it, it is cool to see how hockey has taken over that town. And yeah, Vegas is a major transient city where people come in for the weekend, they party, and they leave. But Vegas has bought in in hockey, and if you're not a Knights fan in Vegas, you're missing out. That's well, you a know. Party. And let's be honest. I mean, that's one of the great things about sports in general is it does unify people like Noreen. She's not she's not a basketball fan. Frankly, I'm not a huge basketball fan of the four sports. You know how you were talking a couple podcasts ago, how you, you your goal, your bucket list is to get to all four major finals. Yeah. Um, I, I told Noreen about the topic and I said basketball would be my least desirable one to go to. I'm just not a huge basketball fan. That being said, Noreen, who's not even a basketball fan at all, has like jumped like, oh, my gosh, that game was so awesome. We need to do that more next year. And and she's been watching the games and getting excited. And then when they're talking about sports, she throws a couple names out there like she knows something. I mean, See, that's it, cool. You feel really that excitement. Cool. You know, that's how my parents were back in the 90s, too. They still casually watch, but it's it's fun. You know, it brings people together. That's that's one thing. It's why I like I love watching football in a bar. Um, I don't I don't watch Cardinal games at home. I go to I go to a, a local Chili's to watch football just because it keeps me social. But you meet so many random people and you get to have great conversations. You get to talk shit all in fun, and you just get to have a good time with it. And I think sports does bring people together. Yeah, yeah. And let's be honest, some of our best discussions that we've ever had, either in a bar at someone's house, is the best of like who would you get if you had a choice between this player or this player who would you take and why would you take them exactly so some of them have been agreements but some of them have been like flat out like 35 minute debates you know oh absolutely so that leads us to today's actual topic um we're we're the ramifications of the fiscal dollar in comparison to the 1973 oil crisis now inflation uh, of the 1970s no Uh, we, we thought and this is why I, I warned our non-basketball sports fans today. Uh, you might be eh about this episode, but we wanted to talk about our top, our top, our starting lineup for our fantasy basketball team, plus our top three reserves all time. Who would we have in what positions? So we get eight players, eight slots. And for those that, that don't follow basketball, uh, there's a center, a power forward, a wing, a shooting guard, and a point guard. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And then three reserves you can have. Well, whoever you want for those three reserves. So let's start off at the top, man. The center, the guy who tips, who jumps for the ball. 
Who is your starting center all time? Oh, man. Um, okay, so I'll go with my logic. So my logic is I want a, a center who is very, very um, active, who's very athletic, and but also can shoot a three when they need to. Okay, and because so you're going to, of, to a modern center. Uh, well, no. I mean, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that I want someone who can shoot from anywhere. And for me, this is why for 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 just the small smidgen, I'm going with Akeem Olajuwon. Oh, the dream! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm actually gonna go right there with you. Uh, the dream was in his prime, in my when I was a teenager, and watching him play the Suns, he tormented us in the playoffs. Uh, he won a Finals MVP. He had that he had that hook. He could block shots. Akeem Olajuwon was. Uh, he was a once in a lifetime center. For me, it's 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 a close tie between him and Shaquille O'Neal uh, in the early two thousands. But I think I'm going to go with the dream too. Just the range he could hit his free throws, and for me, that's the deciding factor here. And, and so I think it's very important at this point to also go over the names that we have bypassed. Um, we bypassed Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Patrick. We Ewing. bypassed Wilt Chamberlain. David we bypassed Robinson. Bill Russell. So oh, we yeah. bypassed some pretty um, important names at the center position for this this agreement. So I yeah. think it's important to say that for those of you listening that think that we're full of crap, um, we can at least attest that, yeah, we probably are. Because you take the leading point scorer, would be hard not to have him as your center. Well, and the thing, you know, also there's a lot of centers that played in different eras because Wilt Chamberlain, uh, was very Harlem Globetrotter-esque in the way he played. But Bill Russell won eight championships in a row with the Celtics. Yeah. And at center back in the 60s, he's only six foot eight. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. Hey, so we both and agree. let's be honest, Will Chamberlain scored 100 points in a game. So, I, yeah. mean, I mean, we get it. We, we understand the frustration. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. So moving on. We both agree. Hakeem Olajuwon wanted center. Power yeah. forward. Uh, do you want to go first on this one? I, I will go first on this one. There's, there's a lot to choose from, and I and I'm going to stick to mostly my era of basketball, the last 35 years. Okay. Um, but I'm going to go with the mailman himself, Carl Malone. And I love Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley was my my basketball hero growing up, but Carl Malone did it for so long and so well. The mailman to me uh, was the epitome of a power forward. Okay. Okay. So um, that was my second choice. So that was my second choice. But for me, um, I am leaning with Tim Duncan. Oh, yeah. You could be considered a center too. But also, Timmy was a he was a pain in our ass for a long time. But you're well, right. And, he was considered and a power the forward thing, too. The thing that I loved about Tim Duncan is that he was just a matter of fact, no emotions kind of guy. Just got it done. He could shoot and, it. He could block. He could play the four or the five. He was – I mean, Carl Malone was my close second, but attitude – I didn't like Carl Malone's attitude. Oh. So well, I'll because also of say... that, I'm disagreeing with you, but only on semantics because you're right. Carl Malone could easily be the best power forward of all time. But that being said, um, I am going to go with Tim Duncan on my team uh, to oh. play alongside Akeem as the Twin Towers. And, and to be honest with you, I did not pick Tim Duncan because I still hold a lot of resentment from the mid two thousands with what the Spurs did to the Suns, and that's oh. more Robert Ory than Tim Duncan. Okay, okay, but still, yeah. it happened, so we have to move on. But we're also yeah. leaving out such such power forward studs as, like I said, Charles Barkley, uh, Sean Kemp, uh, Kevin Garnett. KG was a, a, a major defensive presence. So, well, let's be honest. You might even be throwing out LeBron James too. Well, he's cons- no, he's more of a wing or a shooting. Okay, guy. all right, all right. Because he- and- well, when you- I'm sorry, when you're six nine and as built as he is, it's kind of hard to look at him as anything more than a power forward. But yeah, but he doesn't he doesn't play the four though. He plays yeah. everything but the five. Right. Right. So all right. So moving on to our wing, our wing guy, our our small forward, the guy that does all the dirty work, your top defender. Uh. Who do you got? Uh, wow. Yeah, this is hard. Um, 
gosh, oh man. I, I guess um, uh, for me, um, this is going to be a tough one. Okay, this is going to be tough. Um, but um, now remember, I'm you not... only have three spots in the reserves, so yeah. And and I'm going to go a little. I'm going to go a little old school. Little old school. Oscar Robertson, the triple oh. double. Oh, the triple oh. double. Playing Excellent the wing choice. position. Playing the wing position. I'm going to go right. with Oscar Robinson. Okay. All right. That's a nice choice. A lot of our listeners might not understand, but if you Google Oscar Robinson, what, what, what he did to the Milwaukee Bucks back in the 70s. Yeah. Oh, dude was a beast. Yeah. I, I am going to take a different route and go with one Scotty Pippen. Oh, oh yeah. He's one of he's the good. best lockdown defenders of all time. Okay. On the Bulls dynasty. Oof. Yeah, I'm, okay, so I did it a little differently. I went with um, complete uh, game. You went definitely with score defense. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, that would be a complete game, I would argue, because if you could score and play D and run the, and run the triangle offense. Yes. Yep, so that's mine. All right, so to recap, you have the Dream, Timmy, Oscar Robinson. I have the Dream, Carl Malone, Scotty Pippen. On wow. to the shooting guard. This is where it gets interesting. Yeah. Two of the greatest players of all time occupy this position. Yeah, I, I, I think for me, um, for me, unfortunately, I'm going with uh, the boy from the south side of Chicago. Ah, MJ uh, Michael Jordan. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Michael Jeffrey Jordan is my pick. A slight edge, okay? A slight edge um, because – of I, I, I it's got to be Michael Jordan for me that that I, I I don't know how I can make a team without having Michael Jordan on that team. I agree I agree and for that reason that is also my pick yeah um I I love now that he's retired and rest his soul Kobe Bryant was a thorn in the sun side for years but they got to be a certain point when the sun's got bad it just like beyond bad. He started watching other teams. You could see just the greatness in Kobe. And I appreciate that on a different level. Now that mentality he has that mama mentality. Everybody talks about now. Yeah. I think it's just because uh, with Michael Jordan, you got the score, but you also have the lockdown defensive player. Yeah. You have, he can play the small forward position if he needs to. Um, you want a big shot. He is the one that you can count. It, it, it's one and one A to me on that one. That that's that's a tough one, but I'm gonna yeah. go with I'm gonna go with the uh, the elder statesman. I agree. I, I will go with that one too. Um, that takes us to point guards. Yeah, this one I I, I think this one is gonna be um, a homer pick um, for me. Okay. Uh, um, in terms of I, I think I'm just gonna go um, with my gut because there are so many great point guards uh, that have played the game. Uh, but for me, it's got to be Magic Johnson. Uh, it's just got to be Magic Johnson. I, oh. I, I, he, he, anyone at 6'10 who can do what he did with the basketball, uh, I just think my team would have so many options having Magic Johnson on as my point guard. You know, a lot of people lose uh, sight of the fact that Magic couldn't shoot early on in his career. He was a facilitator. He could lay it up, but he couldn't shoot. He's like a modern-day Ben Simmons. Right. Or Ben Simmons is a modern day Magic Johnson. I said that yeah, back. maybe that's what it is. But yeah, but yeah, Magic yeah. can hit his free throws. Yep. Um, okay, so you, you're taking Magic. That's an that's a great choice. Uh, uh, it, 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 how about this? I mean, when you think about the names at the point guard position, hell, you could take Jason White Chocolate Williams and be pretty damn good. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I mean, so there are so many great point guards that have have graced us, um, and it's. It's a hard, that's a hard one for me. But anyways, I'm going with Magic Johnson. I think that I'd be safe. I think I'd have a good team with that team. Yeah, I think you're, you're definitely built. You've got an Olympic team right there. And I'm not far behind. Magic's up there with, uh, for me. It's, it's, it's close between Magic, Steve Nash, John Stockton, uh, John Havlicek. I don't think people have ever really watched a lot of what John Havlicek could do. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to have to go with you on that one too. I think Magic Johnson gets it. Circle gets that square because the championships, the, the the ability to make it happen and spread the floor, uh, it's magic. So that's yeah. uh, so we're at the starting five. So to recap, who's your starting five? 
My starting five is Akeem Olajuwon, Tim Duncan, um, Oscar Robertson. Oscar Robertson, thank you. Um, Oscar Robertson, Michael Jordan, and Irving Irvin Magic Johnson. Correct. And I have Hakeem Olajuwon, Carl Malone, uh, Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, and Magic Johnson. So <laughs> we have three spots on the bench. You're you're only going eight deep on this on this team. So people are going to get left out. You have three spots. You can fill them with any positions you want. Who are your three that you're taking and why? This one's very th- – th- this one's actually a little little simpler for me um, because of my starting five having left off so many names. Um, it is going to be uh, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Larry Bird. Oh, wow. If I had them on my bench, I would go 72-0. and 0. There's no doubt in my mind my team would go 72 and 0. That's how that's how confident I am with those three extra players that I mean all and okay so here's my logic. You you have a small team so you have to be widespread enough skill-wise to be able to have any of those players play any of those positions. Oh, I agree. For foul trouble or whatever. So you're going for versatility. I'm going for versatility. Um when I need immediate scoring I got Kobe Bryant. When I need a guy who's just going to take over dirt work, do whatever needs to be done, I got LeBron James. When I got a guy who has got attitude, kick some butt, and do everything, I got Larry Bird. I can fit them in anywhere. Oh, man, Akeem, you're having a bad game. LeBron, why don't you go take the five, man? Go take it for us. Or, Tim, you move over to five, and we'll put you in at four. I mean – to me, that that the that that's about as easy as I can make it. All right, all right, that makes sense. That makes sense. What about you? What do you got? Um, I too, I'm gonna add Kobe Bryant. I mean, you you can't not talk about all time teams not have Kobe on there, right? Um, that's kind of the rest is where it gets tough, man. I I, I think I'm gonna add Shaquille O'Neal. You want the big fella? You, we want the big fella. He's as wide as he is tall. Um, I need somebody that's going to keep the team uh, entertained, talk some shit, and back it up. Yeah, I guess you, you're right there with Shaquille O'Neal. You're definitely going to get – I mean, you're not going to get um, maybe the diversity that I would get on my team, but you're definitely going to get a guy who will take over a game from the low post. Exactly. And, and really, that's what you're looking for. I mean, you have versatility, and, and to, he can go, come down and play the you know Twin Tower scenario like you mentioned with, with the Dream and Duncan. Having the dream of Shaquille O'Neal, you can probably drop uh, Hakeem Olajuwon down to the four at that point. So, okay. all right. My final pick, it's tough, man. Like, there are so many players that, like, I, I just I loved watching growing up. And I tell you, man, I, I think while I can appreciate your, your Larry Bird, I'm going to see your Larry Bird, and I think I'm going to add Steve Nash. You want the you want the point guard. I want the point guard. You want, want that, that guy that can make a shot from anywhere. You want the guy who can give the ball without looking. I want the guy with wall eyes that sees the whole court. Wow. Boy, man, it really is too bad they have not created a computer simulation that you could put these teams together and see who would win. All right. I well, mean, I that just... – I, I, because, I mean, a lot of our players are the same players, so obviously those are washes. But we could compare, you know, we could see what Oscar Robertson versus Scottie Pippen would actually look like. Oh, yeah, right? Because maybe maybe Oscar Robertson wouldn't be that great if he was having Scottie Pippen guarding him. Right? And, and you leave so many people off this list. Like, you're talking about the great Seattle teams of the 90s with Sean Kemp and Gary Payton. Oh, yeah. Detlef Shrimp. Detlef. Yeah. You're not even That's... talking about the Suns greats like Dan Marley and Kevin Johnson. You know, we left Charles Barkley off this list. Patrick Ewing got left off this list. The majority of the first three dream teams were left off this list. Uh, yeah, I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, w- you left LeBron James off your team. Like, that's not even like – like. That that's how, how close in, in terms of total skill sets that these players are, that they're pretty much interchangeable. 
Um, and I know that people are going to pick on us a little bit and tell us that we're, we're idiots or morons. And that's fine. That's the great thing about this discussion is I can be an idiot and well, still have my team. These are our teams. These are the people we're picking. So they don't have to like it because we're the ones doing it, you know? Well, that's, that's where I see it. Now, the question I have. Sorry. Sorry. Janice came home, so the boys weren't running. Yeah, um, they want to see mama. <clears throat> who's going to coach your team? Oh, this might uh, be the biggest deciding factor. Who is the coach? Okay, so this, that, ooh. yeah, there's so many good coaches I could go with, but I've got to go, I've got to try to find a coach who can balance the different personalities of this team and bring out the best. And there have been some pretty dang good coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... I think my coach has to be a former player. I really okay. do. I think it has to be a former player. Um, and there have been a lot of good coaches that have done that. Um, boy, man, a mighty. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to go with Phil Jackson. I, I, I think that I think I buy into his Zen approach, the thinker, not the okay. speaker. All right. Um, there, there's, there's a lot of good coaches out there. Um, a lot of good coaches that didn't win, you know, like didn't win championships, but were heck of a good coaches. No, that's fair. Um, but I, I think for me, I'm, I'm just going to play it safe. I'll go with Phil Jackson and figure that he'll get the team doing what he needs to do. Ah, uh, that's very smart. Um, what about you? What do you think? Oh, you know, it's, I don't want to keep my team to be t- too much like yours. So I, I would have probably had Phil Jackson in the conversation, but I'm going to go with it's close because you're right. There's a lot of guys that have to blend those personalities. Um, Pat Riley's my first instinct. Yeah. Because of what he did with the, Lakers, with the Lakers yeah. in the eighties and the heat in the nineties and two thousands. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to go with Chuck Daly. Oh, you want bad boys coach. Nice. Uh, the coach of the Pistons, uh, the first coach of the first two or three dream teams before Mike Krzyzewski took over. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, I think he's got that attitude. He knows how to blend the personalities and get and get the uh, <gasps> defense out of everybody and, and bring the best out of everybody. Yeah, you want definitely someone that the team can respect, and I think Chuck Daly would get your respect too. Yeah, and I prefer Chuck Daly from the Pistons and the Dream Team, not Chuck Daly from the Magic. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so a final question. Who is okay. going to be your personal trainer? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Joe Prosky. Yeah, the, okay. He was, there you know, he was a longtime trainer for the Suns, and when he was the trainer for the Suns, uh, they had the best training staff in the NBA for decades. So I would, I will take Joe Prosky. There you go. Hey, what color uniform are you going with? Oh man, you know what? Uh, since since it's our dream teams, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna take it all Arizona, man. I like these Rally the Valley uh, Arizona sunsets on the black. I'm, I'm gonna take those jerseys. Okay. I, I have to be partial. I love the Supersonics jerseys before they went to Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. I, I love the green and the gold, and uh, I just thought that was the awesome colors. Yeah. Now, it's hard to look at these players in something other than the color that they had, but I'm going, I'm going, uh, I'm going with the Supersonics. So, speaking of which, on, off topic, before we wrap this up, did you see that Alex Rodriguez is trying to buy the Minnesota Timberwolves and wants to move them to Seattle? Oh, no, I haven't. Yeah, he wants to bring basketball back to Seattle, but the uh, thought process is that the owners want to expand in Seattle and get that sweet, sweet expansion fee more than a re- more than a relocation fee. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I mean, I do find it odd that Seattle, one of the larger cities in the United States, could not support a basketball team. But well, I, they wanted a new arena is what that came down to, and they got yeah. they got bought by a by an oil baron from Oklahoma. So that's what do you expect. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, no. So anyway, so I, I would take that. I mean, but then again, the, the Las Vegas is going to get a basketball team soon, and they're turning into quite a friggin' sports town. Oh, yeah. I expect we'll have baseball and basketball in Vegas in the next five to seven years. I would imagine. Yeah. Well, they already have a WNBA team. They have the Aces, owned by Mark Davis. So Right. They also have um, they have a, a minor league baseball there that's pretty popular. Oh, yeah, the, the Aces, yeah. 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 Um, also, a little-known football team. I don't know if you've heard them, heard about them. Uh, the Silver and Black, the Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders. I have heard of them. I have yes, heard of them. Little football team that has their own poem. I, the Autumn Wind. 
Yeah, well, that's right, baby. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so as we wrap up this show today, uh, who's your starting five plus your reserves and your head coach? We want to hear. Uh, hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. Uh, you can try and guess Tom's uh, dream team. Uh, hit him up on Instagram and Twitter at Liquid underscore EP. I would imagine that if it's anything like the way he picks his fantasy football team, it's probably yeah. all sons, okay? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 if Dan Marley's on his starting five, I, I don't think he's paying attention, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should, we should have done this by saying, okay, if you had to pick your team, the Phoenix Suns, which eight people would make your Phoenix Suns team? Oh, that's yeah. That that's a whole different topic, though. That's a whole have, different topic you for another go time. Deep into Phoenix history for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, buddy. It was a great show today. Uh, why don't you take us home? All right. Hey, thanks for listening, everyone. We uh, really appreciate you. That was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage. <laughs>